Hello, welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 176. You can find me online everywhere as Kralaline. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry, Patreon, Ko-Fi, wherever you can think of. If I'm there, I'm Kralaline. And Big is here as well. <laughs> uh, he was already purring before I uh, started to record. And Miss Laia is running around in the background might want to jump on me in a sec we'll see she's pondering her life's choices um i have a web shop colorfulcreativity.nl or colorfulcreativity.com and this is a podcast about all my creative things the colorful creativity that kralaline does um mostly knitting spinning a bit of embroidery a bit of crochet Sometimes a bit of glass bead making. And of course, the stuff that I make in my business, the yarn dyeing and the stitch markers. Do I make, make anything else? I don't know, I do a lot of stuff. So. And this mister is really, really happy. He is so happy. He is out of the cone of shame. Has been for a week and a half already. And he is happy as can be. He is all healed up nicely and well. He is back to his normal self, except for a few grams less that we're trying to feed him. I'm pretty sure he's eating enough so he will gain that weight loss back. What am I wearing today? Um, I am wearing another hand knit from the olden days. This is a bonfire cowl. The pattern is by Brioche Queen and Nancy Marchant. And I've knit this a few years ago um, as a challenge to learn how to knit brioche. And not just straight brioche, but with increases and decreases. And it worked out well. But I hardly ever wear cowls because um, it's coming down to here. And that means it will hang in my plate if I'm eating. It will hang in the water when I'm doing dishes or anything. Um, so yeah, this is just for being pretty on camera and not being so cold here in the chest area for uh, now. So that's just it. I have finished objects. Uh, let's just dive in right away because I have a finished pair of socks for Robert, my husband. This is a test knit I did for the lovely Kaya Gosens of Lana Filia. And the pattern is called the Bedside Socks. I just call them na 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 Batman socks. So, um, yeah. These were definitely a lot of fun to knit. The foot was a bit of a struggle because dark blue in the evenings when the light is already gone it's difficult especially when it's 80 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle but it worked out fine and i managed to do the stockinette foot basically in two days the past few days um as you saw i have a pair um i will show you a bit of a close-up of the bat signal um, there is a Latvian braid, it is a two color cast on and a corrugated rib. So I use four different needle sizes, 3.25 for the cast on and the braid, 3.0 for the rib, 2.5 for the color work and 2.25 for the stockinette. And there's some extra color work here as well. So these were definitely a lot of fun to knit um, because of the special techniques that I had not used before. Like the two color cast on I may have done before, but I don't remember. So it was new to me. The Latvian braid as well. Um, and it was a challenge to get it to fit over um, the instep. So um, worked fine by changing sizes. I haven't blocked these by the way. I just put them on the blockers. I usually don't block socks. So 
these will just go into the washer after they have been worn. Because now that I've shown them, I can uh, actually gift them to Robert. Um, the yarn I used, the dark blue is colorful yak sock, so my own hand dyed. The yellow is colorful smooth sock, so also my own hand dyed. Uh, the yellow, it was called Narcissus in my stash, but I'm fairly certain that that was a test dye and ended up being hello yellow in my shop. And the dark blue is uh, dancing on waves or something. Dance on the waves. I always forget the exact name, but uh, yeah, it is a very nice dark blue. And uh, very traditional bat signal socks. So, project one finished. But I have a second finished object. I am putting those away too because Binks will keep rubbing on it. Look what's finished. My garden gate sweater is all done. It has two sleeves with color work. All the ends are woven in, also on the bed socks. So, yes, I did that. So, here you go. The Garden Gate is a pattern by Jennifer Steingas of Knit Love Wool. And um, she has lots of beautiful patterns with gorgeous yokes. But, yeah. Um, she is a size inclusive designer on paper. But the fit for the bigger sizes is definitely, yeah, a bit less well. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I was trying it on and I had like room for three tits in the back. I have to say with the sleeves added to it, it has become a lot better. And I should just not do a lot of extra ease. I should just stick with the size like zero or just one inch of ease and definitely not go for the four to five inch of ease. Um, I have a lot of room here in my armpit. It's just a lot of fabric there that shouldn't be there. Um, if I am going to knit another one, I will use the suggestion I got taking the upper bust measurement and moving stitches from the back to the front when splitting the sleeves. So you have more room here, less room in the back and it will fit better. Uh, so that was a great suggestion and that's what I'm gonna do with my next sweater I'm gonna do from this designer. Uh, I have yarn and pattern ready to go. I have some hand spun that I want to do in a yoke that will look gorgeous, but I hope it will fit better than this one. I still have to wash it though. Um, the yarn is definitely not, not filled out yet. This is Rowan Valley Tweed and Rowan Valley Tweed gets really nice and soft when you wash it. it I think it's already next to skin soft. I have gotten a bit better <laughs> the past few years with those things. Um, but if you wash it, it nicely fills out. It is now pretty thin and you can see through some bits. Yeah, you can see through it. If I wash it, you can't. It's like it, it poofs up, felts a little and turns out perfectly. Uh, I used on the inside, on the yoke and on the sleeves, leather back jacquard for catching the long floats. I made it a three color color work instead of a two color color work and I love it. I've had so many compliments on that bit which is nice because it's definitely hard work to do three color color work. Um, I did it partially with a ring when I finally found that thing back and on the second sleeve I didn't even use that. I just put two strands over my left finger and one on my right and I could just pick and with the leather back jacquard, you don't have to catch floats. So 
you're already working in a rhythm and that worked really nicely because the catching floats with two hands and three colors is way more difficult than a ladder back stitch. Um, what else is there to say? Well, the yarn is uh, Rowan Valley Tweed. Like I said, I got that from uh, my lovely friend Angela. I bought it when I was in her shop. Now she only has a web shop, but then she had a brick and mortar yarn shop. And why do I now find a dropped stitch? Oh my God. There is a stitch on the loose all the way up there. I have not done anything. Oh God, did a yarn brick somewhere. I have no clue what happened here. Let me find the stitch marker. So I can make sure it doesn't run away further than it already has. And I absolutely love these things for it. Gosh, does it show? Does it show? Come on. You know, the light bulb markers. Here it is. I will figure out a way to get that attached again. Because of this yarn is kind of grippy, it doesn't run down at all. So I have no clue what happened here. Look, could have been that a thread broke, but I'll have to find it. I, I don't see it, so. No clue. My stitch count wasn't off. It looks like a short row. Maybe I just missed it. I don't know. Maybe a cat snagged it when I was trying it on. The cat really needed cuddles. So. Um, as I was saying, the yarn is from my lovely friend Angela from Yarn and Yarns when she had a brick and mortar store in Cardiff or in Penarth. And um, so the yarn is now five, six years old. Definitely due to become a sweater. Uh, I have some left and I also have another sweater quantity in a different color. So might be able to combine that and uh, make another sweater. Um, it's almost 450 grams. So almost nine skeins went into this. And what else? I knit it on different needle sizes. Um, color work was four and a half, stockinette was four and ribbing was 3.75 millimeters. And it is now due for a nice soak uh, once I have my spin dryer back in place because it's still in the attic instead of in the studio. More on that bit later. Uh, but yeah, it is done. I cast this on for the 12 cast-ons 2022. So that was January 2023. Almost two years, I think. That's fine. Um, that's pretty normal for me <laughs> to do two years on a sweater. Time to continue with my works in progress. And yeah, that's not a lot because I focused on those other two. Those are now finished in my Elden Woodcraft bag by uh, Elden Woodcraft <laughs> that I got from my lovely friend Angela is a plain vanilla sock and it is a schuppel zabbel crazy in the color tiefe wasser and i added about 20 rows maybe 10 rows 15 something something uh, i always keep the markers like that I can just add them whenever I need them. Um, so 
so 10, 20, 30, 40. I do about 50 or 60 on the leg. These are for Robert. 72 stitches, just plain vanilla, two by two rib. Uh, high, high sharps, two and a half millimeter. And that's about it. Just gonna do a heel flap and gusset. Heel, just nice and simple. My, I can take it everywhere project. Not that I have been anywhere lately, but okay. Then in this uh, knitted fabric or knitted print fabric, a project bag that I got from my lovely friend Francesca, I have a new project. Um, I wasn't even finished with the bad side socks. I think it was Friday. I was like, oh, I can finish these and then I will continue with the other knit along I'm joining. The uh, Socken Weltreise knit along, so a sock world travel knit along, um, where your pattern has to have something to do with a city or a country or somewhat adjacent to you can travel there. And I was actually going to pick up my Delft socks by the lovely Lena, who is also the host, one of the hosts for the knit along. Um, but then I saw a new test knit and I just couldn't say no to that because, uh, look at it. These are the uh, funky zigzag socks by Fraulein Stettich or um, Julia Exner. And um, she also has a, another super cool pattern where you can use leftovers in strips and you use intarsia. This one is also intarsia, and for those of you who really know me, you know my love for intarsia. I really love that, and this is just such a fun and looking very challenging, even for me. Um, so I just couldn't say no, and I was accepted right away. And she even made a bigger size in the pattern, because um, at first it was only going up to 68 stitches, but Robert needs 72. I was like, I can either knit them for myself in 64, but I could also knit them for my husband in 72, if you are going a size bigger. And somebody else also asked for a size bigger, so I wasn't the only one. Um, so yeah, uh, it was uh, pretty quickly done uh, to make it a, a size bigger, and I'm knitting them for Robert again. And I already have a toe, because these are toe-up socks. And now the challenging part starts and my brain just doesn't want to work on it at the moment. Uh, the yarn I'm using is all Lang Yarns Jawohl. And I have no clue if a color number is what the color I'm holding up is. So I'm not gonna mix and match that, but I'm using these colors. A navy blue, a turquoise, and a neon green. This is for the heel cuff and toe. And these two will be the zigzag. Uh, Robert picked them and I already split them up. So I have two of each because with intarsia you are not going into in the round and you're not doing floats. So you have to have the amount of balls that are necessary. As you can see, there's a zigzag on the front, but it's also on the back. Here you can see that it's front and back. And that means that I need four balls to make sure I can get around. Um, I am knitting them on a two and a half millimeter needles. The pattern suggested 2.75 millimeter needles, but I know two and a half millimeter will give me the gauge that I need for socks for Robert. For now, I went with the rounded toe and now I really need to start the pattern, but my brain just isn't working. I need to move some stitches. I need to do a yarn over and a, a slip slip knit together and it it's not working in my head how it actually works. So um, this one is set aside until after I finish recording and editing the podcast and then I hope I can make something with it. Um, it's probably just do what it says, follow the stitches and do not read along too far. Just do what it says. 
just like in sock madness patterns i just have to take it one stitch at a time and not focus on the whole thing right um that was everything that i have been working on so yeah it wasn't a lot like last time but the things i did work on did see quite some progress um acquisitions are also present i completely forgot to show you this one i actually kept it wrapped up because i know you love that uh, paper the tissue paper just as much as i do um sorry for the crinkling i know it's annoying but i thought it would be fun to open it with you guys i already know what's in there but you don't so Ta -da -da -da. Um, a few weeks ago there was a shop update with self-striping yarn at the Crealin Design web shop and I couldn't resist because this is autumnal and look at all those colors it's a 15 stripe self-striping yarn this is the smooth sock base and it has a mini skein as well for contrast heel cuff and toe so you don't break the stripes I think it is gorgeous. Um, it was sold out in two minutes. Uh, I am a person who definitely sets an alarm for these updates. So I was very, very happy that I got it. Uh, she had an update last Friday with Halloween colors that I was not too keen on getting. So I didn't get it. And I also saw that she dyed twice as much and she has a few left over not sure if that is the case once you see this of course but hey i tried <laughs> um i'm just not that much into halloween so then i already told you last time that i swatched two red yarns to see if i could handle them on my skin and i could both but I got myself this yarn in sweater quantities. So here is Lopi Kamp Garn in red and in white for a festive yoke sweater that I'm kind of itching to cast on, but also I want to work on whips. I have a test knit. I have other things I need to do because, well, that. Uh, plenty stuff going on so this might have to wait until next year and if it waits until next year that means i can cast it on in january and maybe finish by next christmas who knows um so yeah did i work on anything else do i want to show anything else i don't think so I did open up a few project bags to see what's in there and see if I want to work on it. And there is definitely a sweater I might want to work on. There is a pair of socks I tried to work on and then saw, damn it, I printed out the wrong chart, the large size, and I needed a medium size and I already started. So I need to go back a few rounds and I already don't like knitting those socks, but they are a gift for someone. <laughs> so I really need to unpick all that work which sucks but hey um i might be able to drop down and flip the stitches i'm not sure i have to check it out but i wasn't in the mood for that i also have to go back on the other sock that i was knitting for robert because i had to go down a needle size for that part and i forgot uh, but i have that needle empty now now that the bad side socks are done that's a good thing so I could definitely start doing those things. Um, so yeah, yarn acquired, shop update time. I am working on putting stuff in the shop that are fun things to gift, like the loose parts of the gift box, um, tea, candles, etc. So the, the the leftovers of gift boxes that I have done in the past two years. So a rainbow box, gift box, 
autumn box now. You get the point. Um, that is the plan to put that in the shop for the end of October. So it is in time for gifting season. And a new gift box, <laughs> just because I can and because I love making those gift boxes. And um, the bigger news is that my little business has a birthday coming up tomorrow and it's turning 19. I, uh, yeah, blink, blink. How the hell did Kralaline turn 19? Um, yeah, I'm amazed by that myself. Um, I also saw that I've been podcasting for nine years, uh, beginning of September, which is also like, how does time go by that quickly and that slowly at the same time? Um, so I thought it would be nice to have a little celebration next week. So from Monday to Friday, I will uh, have 10% off in the shop on everything, even the sale items, because I wanted to lose those things too, um, with the code HAPPY19. Um, I will put all the info down below and I will post on Instagram. I will send out a newsletter tomorrow, uh, the whole shebang. Uh, but you're the first to know here. If you're on my Patreon, you will know today. Um, also, I am planning on doing a little undyed yarn de-stash. I am going through all the boxes and bins I have undyed yarn in and finding stuff that I need to lose because I cannot dye kit silk very well. Um, it's itchy on me and it's not every brand, but this brand apparently is. Uh, I don't know if it's shedding more or something or just a different kind of a goat. I don't know. Um, I have nine skeins of undyed uh, kit silk. I have like a partial cone of yarn that is, oh, I called it Merino Aran. It is 100 meters, 100 gram. Uh, Unplied, uh, just a really fat single. It's definitely fun yarn, but A, it does sell very badly. <laughs> I have a few skeins in the shop, but yeah, it's just something that has to go. Um, I also have a partial cone of DK, but the yarn is not regularly plied, it's different. Um, well, I will probably post those on my D-Stash page, uh, but that's also for next week or the end of October. Um, I found all those things back because we had a little renovation and with that we are going into the personal talk so if you are not interested thank you for watching this far and hope to see you again soon and if you're sticking around thank you very much we did a little renovation of our upstairs um, we had new windows fitted in um, so the windows and the window frames all came out and new ones came in. We went from wood to plastic, which I am not the biggest fan of, but the plastic doesn't need to be uh, painted every three years, uh, sometimes longer, but depending on the paint or the paint job or the side of the house uh, where the sun is on all the time, it definitely needs more painting than the other side. Um, so yeah no more upkeep for that i can actually open my windows to the inside instead of to the outside i have bigger windows that open now so it's way better for fresh air coming in and in summer i am already looking forward to that that i can open up my windows uh, on both sides of the house and just let it air through we couldn't do that because the windows open to the outside we couldn't put in uh, fly screen on most of the windows which meant I couldn't open the window because then the cats could just jump out the window uh, not that they ever tried but I don't want to try it out either um, so that is now an option we can put the windows there 
the German-like windows that open to the inside, but you can also put them in a, a kind of tilted way. Um, and it can actually go two ways, the five centimeter one, but also a two centimeter one. The two centimeter one is nice for airing out the cat room because they cannot get stuck in that tilted window. Um, tilted windows are definitely a bit dangerous for cats because they can get stuck when they try to jump in between it. They can choke themselves here, they can get stuck with their ribs in between and especially if you're not home, it's super dangerous because Often those are injuries your cat won't survive. So, that being said, um, I am very happy with my new windows. I can actually wash my windows myself now, um, instead of having to get onto the roof and uh, wash them then. Because they open in to the inside and um, the window that opens is now wider than it used to be see um, we used to have these narrow windows now they are half of the big window like the whole space in half is what opens so that means if I open up the window to the inside I can just put my arm outside and wash my windows myself so that is just one of the better things of my new windows um, I'll show you a little clip of the photos I made of the studio, getting everything out, having a fully empty studio and then with the old window and the new window and getting everything back in. I am not done with getting everything back in yet because I'm still sorting out stuff. Like do I really want that in the studio? Can this just stay in the attic? Most of the yarn is back, undyed and dyed, so shop stock is definitely in there. Um, so I can easily grab it and pack your orders. Um, but yeah, I am very happy this is all done. It wasn't 100% perfect, but it was definitely good. The people were nice. Um, some things just got busted. But that happens when you break stuff down. Um, they fixed it not in a way that we would fix it. I would rather have them tell us and then we find a solution together instead of they do it, they fix it, and then tell me, oh, I had to fix that. It's just not my style, but okay. Um, it's fine, and they didn't leave it broken. So that's already very good. Um, so yeah, that is what we did. And I think that was all we did the past two weeks preparing for that. Um, we had a very social weekend. I think that was, uh, yeah, that was the weekend before this weekend. So I haven't told you. We had a nice uh, catch up with some old friends from university, from our student association. And the bar we worked, the student association runs the bar. so. Uh, that's how it works <laughs> and um, it was not the reunion but since we all had the date off for the re reunion that has been put on hold until March we had a nice catch up there and the day after we went to visit friends and the day after that a friend came to visit me so yeah it was a very social weekend and Robert was pretty much done on the third day after those two days. It was a bit too much, but okay, we know that now. We also biked both those days. I think we biked about 50 kilometers in one weekend. So yeah, it might have been a bit too much, but it was working. He was feeling okay, but not the day after. So yeah, everything else is going. And it is now a nice quiet Sunday. I think Robert wants to watch the launch of SpaceX in an hour or so. So that is why I'm recording on Sunday morning. And now I will put the yarn away again. And 
I seriously have too much yarn. I need a few bins to empty. Um, for the sale, for instance, I'm looking there because I have a box of uh, Scheepjes yarn. And it is Scheepjes Stonewashed XL and it's already in the sales section in the shop for two and a half euro a ball. Regular price is four and a half euro now. And I also have the tiny uh, Scheepjes Katona, so the cotton yarn in 25 gram balls in a lot of colors still. And if it is still here after the sale, I'm probably <coughs> gonna put it on the Dutch eBay version, Mark Platz. Like the whole lot for a fixed price. Or if any of you has any interest in anything of it, um, just send me a message. I might try it first on the D-Stash page and then put it there if it doesn't sell on the D-Stash. That might be the better idea. So, yeah, I hope you are all doing well, um, enjoying autumn and the more knit-worthy weather. And I hope to see you again soon, um, hopefully even in two weeks. <laughs> so um, have a great day and have a great time until then. Bye-bye.